This video will work out an example of finding an orthogonal basis by using the Gram-Schmidt procedure. Suppose that we have a subspace W which is the span of these three vectors 1, 1, 1, 1, negative 1, 4, 4, negative 1, and 4, negative 2, 2, 0. These three vectors are linearly independent and thus span a three-dimensional subspace of R4. Let's call these three vectors x1, x2, and x3. Our goal by using the Gram-Schmidt procedure is to find an orthogonal basis for the same subspace. So we will have to define three vectors since this is spanned by three vectors is a three-dimensional space. The first one we always start with the first vector of the Gram-Schmidt procedure V1 is equal to X1 itself since we need some kind of a starting point. So we'll define V1 as X1 and find two more vectors that are mutually orthogonal in order to create the orthogonal set. The second vector, V2, is going to be X2 minus its projection onto V1, which is going to be necessarily orthogonal to the vector v1 due to the properties of projections. And this can be rewritten as x2 minus x2 dot v1 divided by v1 dot v1 times the vector v1. That's the projection of x2 onto the line spanned by v1 and this is the form of our second vector. The third one, v3, is going to be x3 minus its projection onto the subspace spanned by v1 and v2. Broken up into its separate orthogonal projections, we get that it's going to be minus the projection onto v1 of x3 and also minus its projection onto v2. And again, this can be rewritten in a dot product form as x3 minus x3 dot v1 over v1 dot v1 times v1 minus x3 dot v2 divided by v2 dot v2 times v2. So this is our form and the three things that we're trying to find again are the first vector v1, v2, and v3. So let's start with v1. v1 once again just our starting point is the same thing as x1 so writing it out as an actual vector well, it's just x1, it's 1, 1, 1, 1. Now the second vector, v2, that's going to be x2 minus this dot product over here. So let's write that out in the vector form again. x2 is equal to negative 1, 4, 4, negative 1, minus the dot product of x2 and v1 which is going to be negative 1 plus 4 plus 4 minus 1 divided by the dot product of v1 and v1 which is 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 times the vector v1 which is 1 1 1 1 and so that's going to be equal to once again, negative 1, 4, 4, minus 1, minus 3 halves times 1, 1, 1, 1. 
And so that's equal to, if we write it as a single vector, negative 2.5, 2.5, negative 2.5. Now, since we're just performing hand calculations, it's nice to have simple numbers. And since with an orthogonal basis, the only thing that matters is the mutual orthogonality of the vectors, the magnitude doesn't matter. And therefore, we can scale any of the vectors by any constant. In this case, we choose to scale v2 by 2.5. And therefore, we can make this equal to negative 1, 1, 1, negative 1. Since the direction is preserved and therefore the orthogonality of these vectors is preserved, but the actual numbers are easier to deal with in hand calculations. The next vector, v3, is going to be x3, so 4 minus 2, 2, 0, minus this first dot product, so that's going to be 4 minus 2 plus 2 divided by v1 dot v1, which we already found to be 4, times the vector v1, which is 1, 1, 1, 1, minus the dot product of x3 and v2, which is negative 4 minus 2 plus 2, divided by 4, which is the dot product of v2 and v2, as we found here. Again, just four ones added together, times the vector v2, which is negative 1, 1, 1, negative 1. And this is going to be 4, negative 2, 2, 0, minus, well, this is just going to be 1, so it's minus this vector, 1, 1, 1, 1. And this is going to be negative 1, so it's actually going to be plus negative 1, 1, 1, negative 1. And if we add these together, we get 2, minus 2, 2, minus 2. At this point, we could once again scale this by 2 in order to get the vector 1, negative 1, 1, negative 1, but it doesn't actually matter because we're done. We wanted to find an orthogonal basis, and again, all that matters is the directions, not the actual magnitudes, and therefore, we have such a basis here. In other words, W can also be written as the span of these three vectors which we just found. 1, 1, 1, 1, negative 1, 1, 1, negative 1, and 2, minus 2, 2, minus 2. You can see that the dot product of each one of these with the others is going to be 0, and therefore this forms an orthogonal basis. Optionally, each one of these vectors could also be scaled by its own magnitude in order to get an orthonormal basis. But for an orthogonal basis, this is all that we need.